since last night I've made nine videos. Nine, deleted all of them. Either I was angry, I was frustrated, I was depressed. Um, a lot of the feelings you felt last night. I guess maybe it's good to vent also. Um, nobody to blame yesterday, I don't think. I, I'm easy uh, and, and quite quick to blame myself if um, something goes wrong. That's uh, my fault. Jason did a great job preparing the horses last night and doing the best we could to have them ready. The I'll start with obviously that the headliner of last night was Slim Jimmy. Um, sweet on Pete. You know I went into depth about what happened and where she. At the end of the day, she came in great. She looked great. She warmed up great. She put one bad step in in her entire calendar year on, on the racetrack. She put one bad step in and it rolled and she rolled off. She was fine after. She finished up fine. She walked back to the barn fine and she was sound. It was just the worst timing to make a mistake ever, ever, for her, for sure. I was going to say me. I'm sure I've had uh, bad luck somewhere along the way many times, but um, as we all have in this game. But that's just one of those things where it's a tough page to turn, but you have to turn it. Now, Slim Jimmy's a little different. Uh, when preparing Slim Jimmy, we... We had to be careful, right? Because he bled his last start. Now he's entering the Lazex program for his first start last night. He's coming in. I had told you guys when we trained him on Tuesday on Lazex, he just didn't feel comfortable. So we were forced to make a shoeing change. Now a lot of people are going to say, well, why didn't we just leave him the way he was at the start of the year? That's great. But he wasn't the same as he was at the start of the year. You know, when horses start hitting their elbows and interfering, they're growing, they're changing. Whether that's a, him a deficiency where... He's starting to get sore, which I don't think it was. I think he was just starting to get faster, quicker, growing up, and get up into his elbow. So it necessitates changes. We could have went to elbow boots, but again, he just didn't seem as good. The bar shoes we put on him when he won his next start were adequate at the time, but he'd only had them on five days. As he got further into the calendar, he just wasn't comfortable. His feet bug him. So he just wasn't comfortable on them. We had to make a change. That change, we trained him on Lazex. We did put him back to the way he was when he touched his elbow. And he touched his elbow again, training. He wasn't awesome. So that, again, necessitated a little more of a, a change with the shoeing. Now, the problem in that is we can't train him hard. We've already trained him hard on Tuesday. You can't train him hard again going into the final. It's unfair to the horse. We trained him mile 20. He felt great, just like he did warming up until I stepped on the accelerator and he made a break I scored him down he made a break I knew I was in trouble and over half the field made a break so really at that point all you gotta do is keep him trotting and I, and I couldn't I was in trotting mode just keep him trotting and I couldn't not only did he make one break he made two breaks so a very frustrating night last night uh, you know I'll run through the whole day quick for you I just wanna move past it you know Although it is the biggest night of the year in Ohio, and it's a huge night for the stable.ca, we can't let it define the entire year we had. We had a fantastic year. The horses did well. They made money. It's just upsetting. But there's a time for mourning, and there's a time for moving on, and no one died here. The horses are healthy. The horses are sound uh, for the most part. And uh, we're going to move past it. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to put this I'm going to put this day yesterday to rest on my ninth video since last night. Um, Amor Diener did all he could yesterday. I know somebody said he raced like crap. He didn't race like crap. He did everything he could. Trot in 57 a piece. That's what he can trot right now. There's nothing wrong with that. He's a big tall colt that's going to grow into himself with a fairly decent attitude. He's come a long way. He did what he could yesterday. He's gone out to the field now. Um, we had purchased a horse. Steve Palermo purchased a horse and sent him to us. We raced him in the final yesterday. Finished fourth. Uh, Patriot uh, something. Donato Patriot K. He raced good. Um, Kentucky. You cannot. And I asked Sunday. I asked Tyler to tell Charlie Norris. And he did. The issue with Unbeatable Camp is. And the reason that people can't follow instructions with him. Is because when you're sitting behind him. He feels like a monster. And when you move him, he's like, I liked it more where I was in the inside there. And he just kind of pulls up a little bit. Can't come first over, can't put him on the front. 
He came first over and put him on the front. All before the half. And although as much as I'd like to blame Charlie Norris, the guys at the Meadowlands did the same thing. First over with them. You can't come first over with them. Just the way it is. You know, you saw when he when he trotted in 54 how hard I fought with him to leave him on the inside. But these guys only see him for 10 minutes in his life. So it's not their fault. Can't blame two world-class drivers and a trainer that's been around forever for doing what the horse in front of them feels like he wants to do. And then immediately doesn't. So it was a bad day for Unbeatable Camp. He scoped perfectly clean. That's great. No blood, no nothing. Perfect. The problem is, uh, now what? Do we turn him out? It, yeah, I could easily make a case to you. Just turn him out. Tyler called me, says, listen, Anthony. He said, you know, a lot of these Colts aren't coming back down for the final in Kentucky. He could likely get in the final. And he's right. So I asked Chris Beaver to bring the horse back. He brought him to Columbus last night. We're going to pick him up on Wednesday. I just asked him to turn him out in the field till Wednesday. We're going to bring him up here. We're going to prep him for the final. And we're going to enter him in the final and see if he gets in. Now, I think the extension of that is if he does not get in and he's prepped, we could take him to freehold and race him in that stake race that he's eligible to. The problem with the freehold race is I don't know who the hell is going to go. Historically, no one went. No one. It's not always the case, though. I see Tron Smedgehammer and uh, Aki Svonsted looking at some of those smaller stake races, too, and just, just I've seen them in the past. So it's not going to be a cakewalk, but at the same time, he trained down on a half. He qualified here at Northfield. That break he made at Northfield, you guys saw the break. It was just him being a hothead. He made the break in the middle of the straightaway, not in the turn. So he can get around a half. But is it conducive to race him in the in freeholder in the final? I don't know. I'm going to let him tell me. There's no point. All the horses we're about to talk about, the Confederate Cruiser was turned out. I don't need you guys to, to email me and say, turn him out. I appreciate the insight, and I'll, I'll accept all the emails, but I'm going to let the horses tell me what they're going to need to do. That's the easiest way to do it. So that's where Unbeatable Kemp is. Uh, Blue Bayou Dio, the young kid that drove him, I, I, I get where he's coming from. He doesn't know the horse. He doesn't want to look stupid. Leaving the gate, he couldn't. Bla he could have. He didn't blast her out. You know, He was just going to float out, but everybody was in the middle. No one's going to give the kid a hole, so he just drug her to the back. She come home 28 and a piece and a pitiful track and race great. She makes the final. I'm eager to race her in the final. And then we come to Ohio last night. Sweet on Pete. It was just a bad step and nothing more. Nothing more. I can't really tell you what she did because what she did that resulted in a break last night, she's done many, many times before and just pushed right through it. She trot her. So it was just an unfortunate break. Slim Jimmy was quite something quite different. Um, we are going to work with Jimmy. We are going to have to tinker with Jimmy. Uh, the good news is he was sound last night. He didn't bleed. Nothing went wrong other than the race. All these horses have had great years. So I, me, you, everyone involved with the stable is just going to have to push through. That's the way it is. It's 10 o'clock in the morning right now. I see uh, Purple Aura is just coming off the track training. She looked great. Looked very, very good. Uh, we're going to go with the other two fillies. One, two, skip a few. And of Tom right now, we have a sale this afternoon in Illinois. We have sale coming up in Ohio. We have a sale coming up in Ontario. Yeah, last night sucked. Nine videos deep to get through what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> in, a, in any kind of optimistic way. We're just going to have to get over it. You know, we've had a great year. We're going to continue to push forward. Hopefully, we'll have a good finish. We still have Bomb Hugger. We still have a litany of Buckeyes and Ferris to go to in Ohio. We still have Ontario. It is what it is. So, I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, I don't know if this video will make the cut. <laughs> the first eight didn't. But uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Maybe it's the Starbucks. Maybe it's watching Purple Aura. Maybe it's just trying to reorganize the entire year and put things in perspective in a big picture way and not focus on the disaster that was um, yesterday. So um, I hope you guys, I always say this, I hope you had a great weekend. If you had anything to do with any of those horses, you did not. But better days ahead. I'll talk to you soon.